Welcome to the Get Offset Podcast. My name is Emily. And I'm Joan Apart. And I got you a little something. I want to go ahead and share it. Holiday shopping has begun, dude. Yay. It's begun. And I actually, Sweetwater, this is a Sweetwater thing. I got you to talk about on the podcast at some point. Ooh, so much foam. Do you know what it is? Gotta keep it protected. Secret, keep it safe. <laughs> oh, it is. It is fully encased in here. I didn't expect it to be an unboxing. They did a good job. Yeah. It's a ukulele. Ukulele. Yay. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. That. It still has. They did a really good job protecting this. Wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. Lanikai. L A N I K. Oh, that's wonderful. Hi. Thank you so much. Yeah, I love it's <laughs> it's baritone size. It's perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Sweetwater. This is really Thank beautiful. you, Sweetwater. I'm sure that's I'm, ex- I'm guessing that's a laminate, but it looks really nice. Hmm. No, I'll take I'll take a look at it, uh specs, whatnot, uh when it gets here. And uh I am very excited to put it through the pedal board. <laughs> and it comes with a little Oh, uh, it's bag. perfect. Nice. I can travel nice with it. Yeah, it's a three-band oh, awesome. EQ and a tuner built in Fishman Fishman yeah. stuff. Yeah, and normally I- when it comes to ukuleles, uh or ukuleles, uh Fishman ukuleles. is typically uh the pickups that they install in them. So yeah. Uh, that's great. That's awesome. Hey. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gosh. Thank you, Sweetwater. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. I am excited to get this to you and out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> I too much it's too much stuff. Too much stuff. I know. I see in the background. I look around. I see. <laughs> you see what I have for sale in the exclusive Discord server. You too yeah. can be a member of the exclusive Discord server. If you join our Patreon at patreon.com slash get offset at the $5 a month level or above. Exclusive right access to uh sale of gear. <laughs> Which I usually do, like, lowest reverb price minus 20%. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's actually a really, really good deal. <laughs> I was I was yeah. looking up a few. I was looking up a few of those, like, hmm, should I? <laughs> should I? Yeah, uh, you should. I'm biased. <laughs> I need to buy my niece it. gifts for the holidays. Aww. What were you looking at for them? You don't know yet? Um... Uh, books probably i need to get with my brother for for some solid ideas but yeah Hmm. yeah how about you 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 thinking of doing any holiday shopping (laughs) we talked a little bit about um, last week yeah we did a little bit um i am obviously uh was waiting on certain effects pedals to be released i assume one of them is going to be out by the time this comes out or at least i hope we do it is. assume that i i'm we do assume editing this right now yeah <laughs> as we're speaking as we're speaking um, but in yeah. the past I yes <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah uh there's one that i'm basically waiting to see what it is and whether i like it but knowing this company i like everything they do and they need to stop assaulting my wallet <laughs> or making me sell things <laughs> Yeah, this company is one of the first companies I worked with to do demos, and I'm really glad they still like sending me things because otherwise, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd I'd have a lot less money. Yeah, they're they're really good guys, and I pretty much enjoyed working with them with the demo that I did work with them. So <laughs> excited! I know, I don't we're be, okay. So those who are wondering, we're being cryptic because <laughs> it's literally never happened before. But mm-hmm. I live in constant fear that if I talk about <laughs> A pedal that's minute. to be released before we're done filming. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like if 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 I talk about it, I know I feel like I'm gonna jinx myself, and they're gonna <laughs> email me on like Thursday and be like, "Emergency, don't launch." Oh, and then I no. have to go back to this and edit it out. Super short episode. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, oh. but um, yeah. So we we do have some topics. 
today. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there are some really exciting people in, in guitar right now. And I don't think a lot of people who are more exciting than um, the person we're going to talk about today. It's a very yeah. horrific episode. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, for this episode, I kind of wanted to piggyback our last episode in talking about an artist that very much um, puts, I guess, her music for first, as opposed mm -hmm. to obviously anything as far as her appearance or anything, because for quite a while, there was some uh, mystique or lack of knowing who she was for a while, and she was just putting out music, um, Yeah, of course, as her um, it's kind of like a having everything revealed is what each mm -hmm. of those letters stand for. Um, I'm going to kind of, I guess, go for uh, where she started, you know, how things evolved yeah. from there. But she is Fender's first black woman with a signature guitar. And that is the uh, Stratocaster signature that you have, which we'll get know. to. I'll do a handoff and you can talk it's, about it. It's, it's, it's handy. It's, it's, it's an arm's reach. I'm prepared. <laughs> I'm less prepared. But her, like, I remember the first time I heard about her. Mm -hmm. I think it was at the Grammys and she hadn't even released an album yet. And she's out there winning Grammys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she started relatively young. I mean, like around the age of like six, she was already going into competitions pretty early yeah. up until I think she was eight. She was on the, uh, was it today's show when she was 10 playing a piano, playing Alicia's keys. If I ain't got you. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty early starting her career, uh, playing with her dad's band, uh, instead of watching cartoons, she would just pretty much jam with her dad's band. That's how it kind of all started. Yeah. And uh, like definitely the kind of kid who, when I was alone, my parents would point, I'd be like, they're making money for their family. <laughs> Look they were sarcastic. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you love another 12 year old that makes you feel like a lazy piece of shit when you're 12 uh -huh. or older. <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, I mean, speaking about also uh, TV kind of appearances, on December 15th, she's going to be playing the uh, iconic role of Belle in Beauty and the Beast. They're doing a musical live action uh, on ABC this. streaming on uh, Disney+. Plus. It's the 30th anniversary of the animated movie. So I think that's oh. going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. That's they already had the promo. I always liked Belle. Yeah, I did too. Yeah, yeah um, I like the beast too. Uh, um, yeah, but what I do you mean, call it? I, I've seen the character Carlos. design was great. And uh, what do you call it? <laughs> what do you call? Oh, I'm trying to see. Uh, also, the cool thing about the promo when they released it, because that's how I found out, because I saw a little bit of a email or one of the advertisements. It showed, you know, just a little teaser uh, showing her in the bell gown. And when I played it, it actually showed her walk up. You know, and grab the guitar. It was the acrylic one, which she mostly plays herself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the pick itself even has a designed little like rose print on it. It's in the Aww. bell gown. She plays the beginning of uh, Beauty and the Beast and sings it and everything. So I thought nice. that was a really nice touch. So I'm looking forward to see how much guitar action that they're going to include in that so i'm excited i think also based on the interviews that i've seen of her and just personality i think it's perfect to play bell uh, it's gonna yeah. be great. it's gonna be great that's and josh groban's in that too mm -hmm. that just beast. Makes, me, mm -hmm. makes me laugh a little <laughs> also was uh, it shania twain is mrs potts Oh, I love Shania. Oh my yeah. God. Every once in yeah, a while they have I go some on people a Shania there. kick. Those are <laughs> certainly people. Man. Yeah. Um, Belle was always my favorite Disney princess because I was a bookworm like her. <laughs> and I have married a very hairy man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah in the yeah. animated series um i i liked the beast and well yeah i guess yeah carlos you're a pretty hairy dude so i guess i guess it's a yeah. type right it's a type you know it's like that meme put your childhood crush next to the person you ended up with <laughs> yes yeah but that that acrylic uh. guitar of hers is is really cool i remember seeing her play that on the grammys or some award show once and then the her strat came out like 
I think two days after she was on SNL and I messaged my uh, friend Martin who was running AR over there at the time. He's like, we were really mm-hmm. excited about that because we didn't know it. They didn't know if she was going to play the acrylic guitar that she plays a or, lot. Or yeah. Or the new one. And she opted for, I, I it might've been SNL. I think it was, it might not have been, but it was some, some TV performance. And I immediately messaged him like, that's her, that's her signature guitar, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think it. when it was coming down to the performances leading up to the release, when I was asking her to talk about it in the interview, uh, she was saying, you know, I did have the acrylic, but the problem with the acrylic, even though it goes with everything I wear, so that's why I love it, but because of how heavy it is, I only can yeah. wear it for a short mm-hmm. amount of time. But also when it came to the Fender signature, her guitar, I wanted that same feeling that people would come up and tell me of they wanted to reach out and touch it because of how unique and how just the colors kind of prismed off of it. So that yeah. also crossed over into the paint in regards to the signature guitar because she wanted to have that same feel and of course it matches you know a lot of everything what she wears. Yeah, yeah everything. because it, it, it literally takes those colors but it's a holographic paint job mm-hmm. and there's no, there's even perfect. a matching headstock so it's a holographic paint job matching headstock that. um uh, aluminum pit guard and um, the noiseless Fender pickups. And they're eight pounds. There's two on Sweetwater I'm looking at right now that are eight pounds. Yeah, and they still sell those. It's running, uh, was it 1300 I think, is on the Fender website. Sweetwater has them as well. So the it's still a signature. You can, yeah, you can get a demo model for uh, $1,170. Okay, nice. Yeah. They're, like, this is, like, some Mexican-made guitar. It's honestly one of my favorites i didn't think i like sh- i don't i didn't think i liked strats until really? i played it yeah yeah <laughs> i haven't so, so handsome. yeah i have i haven't found a telly or a strat yet that i've liked so i mm. know that's kind of a thing of i've had cars in my life where i didn't like boxy cars and then of course like uh my first car cars. i got a scion xb and i always said well i guess that's the, the the funny joke of it is i guess it had to be the perfect square so i'm guessing at some point i will oh. find either a strat or a telly or something but it won't sound traditional or anything because even my jazz master is not traditional it's like if i if i no. bond with it Like, I'm very picky. So typically, I don't like what most people like. (laughs) Because much like going back, going back to her, she was talking about the way that she plays guitar is not like typical guitar players where she plays it more by ear and like a vocalist. So when she harmonizes with herself, or when she plays melody lines, you know, uh, sometimes she'll get quick or whatever, but she's like, but that's not what it's about. It's to make you feel and actually with the frame of mind of a singer. And I relate a lot with that because even though the way I play, that's always the way I think because my background comes more along the lines of a singer. So I appreciated, of course, reading that when she said that. And I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I I, I think it was Courtney Hartman from Delamay, the band Delamay. Hmm. I was at the fretboard summit in Rancho Bernardo back in like 2018, probably. And she was giving a little panel about soloing. And her big thing was you, you, if, if you're not soloing or, or creating licks the way that you sing or mm-hmm. you would sing, you're, you're really missing out. That's where you get things like slides, bends. That's where you get a more um, melodic quality to your playing versus being really focused on technical chops and shredding and there's a place for that but uh it's not for me mm-hmm. and you, you think yeah like i i hear her playing because i've heard her do a lot of um prince covers her like it reminds me a lot of that like that, yeah, that- very like like prince had technical chops but he didn't have um uh, as as technical and understanding of theory and stuff from what i've read uh, and that's so yeah he was very much played by feel yeah and i touched upon that too when i was doing the research because what is it she said at one point when she started playing guitar she really really fell in love with it when she watched a performance of prince and lenny kravitz doing uh, american woman together and she said <laughs> as, as soon as she saw that like that made her want to play guitar with 
unrelenting passion. Like she really, really badly wanted to play guitar after watching that. And she's like, I'm not really a theory person either. I'm by feel like it's pentatonic, like it's blues, like that's, you know, it's different influences. Like she would say, you know, Eddie Van Halen, Carlos Santana, you know, B.B. Mm, King, Santana. Eric Clapton. I mean, she's like, my influences from are from everything. I don't really want to be boxed into just R&B. R&B is in everything, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's the basis of rock and our most popular mm -hmm. genres. Uh, that's that's just the truth. And what a lot of those players that she mentioned have in common, I think, is that they, they have a very pretty quality to their playing. Like, mm -hmm. you don't always say that about um, guitar playing, that it's pretty. Santana especially, very. Yes. I, it's like that's just the word I would use for Santana's playing, pretty. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's like he's obviously one of the, let's just say, best guitarists of all time. Yeah, yeah. I, I want. Yeah, I watched his master class on that. It was actually the way he approached the guitar. It was like not really typical the way most, I guess, educational uh, guitar classes would go. So it was nice and kind of refreshing. It was more of a sense of feeling and also looking at guitar playing styles that weren't typical than our Western approach and more like either yeah. African or South America. And it was, it was actually really nice to see. Yeah. One, I know Prince always said that, um, he got, he, he complained about getting compared to Jimi Hendrix a lot. And mm. I, I think he's fair in that assessment. I of think course. like if you take just aesthetics of the two, you're going to compare the two. Um, but if you're actually listening to the playing, it is a lot more in line with Santana. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I think that, that makes, makes sense. Want, yeah. Makes you want to go listen to Santana. <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. I'm going to go. <laughs> but like it's it. funny. It's, a, it's funny to me and like just really cool. I should say not funny. haha, -ha, but cool. Mm -hmm. That, you know, if that performance of Prince and, Lenny Kravitz made her really want to pursue guitar. And then at the Grammy, she got to play guitar with Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just recently. I'm like, oh, I remember seeing them like, that's, that was great. That's really great. That made me yeah. happy. You know, I've always liked Lenny Kravitz a lot. <laughs> yeah. And in one of the articles that I read, and of course it was prior to that, she said, like, of all the people that I've collaborated with, one of the people I'd really love to collaborate is with Lenny Kravitz. And well, here we are today. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. You know, you ask for it. It's, it can happen yeah. sometimes. And a lot of these legacy artists, like let's call Lenny Kravitz a legacy artist. He was very influential yeah. in the 90s and early 2000s so he's yep. been around he's been around for a long time doing his thing they they're tickled they're tickled when people mm -hmm. like get uh, like like her come up and cite them as influences and say they want to work with them like yeah. that's great that's not just like a career move that's just like touching to see that what you did and worked so hard on touch someone mm -hmm. else in such of a major course. way and isn't that what so many of us want to accomplish as musicians to just like inspire people to do something, even if it's just like have a feeling? Yeah, just it's yeah. it's basically one of the most fundamental things as humans. Uh, we want to connect. We want to share. Yeah. We want to socialize like that is at the core of what being human really is. Yeah. And I know that for what like everybody wants to leave their mark in some sort mm -hmm. of way. I know that I yeah, started. Good I started the demo channel because I was hoping that I could inspire other women to start demo channels and then maybe I wouldn't have Hello. to do them anymore. <laughs> hey! Hello! Hello. It fucking worked! It, it worked. worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> that is, that's, there you go. It's true. And <laughs> so, like, that's, I, I love that. I love that for her. I love that for Lenny. Um, no, I'm really I excited about I'm really excited about this Beauty and the Beast thing because I'm a sucker for those <laughs> live musicals. Mm -hmm. I I watched The Wiz that they did like oh 10 times. The Wiz was great, dude. It was so much better than the sound of music that they did. I didn't watch, um, I haven't watched one in a few years. So 
I I just they, no, I they stayed away from the me. cats one. I heard horrifying. I saw horrifying things. Uh, I was like, no, I, I'm not gonna watch that. I'm just not an Andrew Lloyd Webber guy. Hmm. I um. What else did they do? They did a Christmas story, which I heard was really bad. Hmm. Hope. I didn't yeah. Know that I was mean. <laughs> yeah, they I haven't had know. much the last couple of years, but hopefully, hopefully this one. Like, I'm 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 getting my hopes up. I'm getting my hopes up. <laughs> oh, I watched the Jesus Christ Superstar with John Legend. That was really good. I feel like if awesome. they actually, I, rem- I remember the did... original one. <laughs> oh yeah, I I saw I saw. God, I don't I remember if it was Jesus Christ Superstar or Godspell because they're like the same fucking thing. Um, I saw <laughs> this it is my the same dad. picture. <laughs> it was like a punk rock version, and Sebastian Bach was in it. Oh my god! Yeah, that's from from Skid that's Row. Wild. Sebastian Bach. It was weird, man. Very weird. Oh, they did the sounds weird. Yeah, let's 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 look at these. Uh, every live TV musical ranked worst is The Passion, New Oof. Orleans. This one barely qualifies Oof. as a live musical since it was essentially the story of the Passion of the Christ with some reworked pop songs thrown in. Weird. Chris Daughtry uh. was Judas. And did a rendition of Imagine Dragons Demons. Is this real? Is that <laughs> Is really this happen? real life? <laughs> Featuring stage narration <laughs> from Tyler Perry. That sounds like a 30 Rock skit. Yeah. Like it sounds like a bit from 30 Rock. Uh, next was Peter Pan Live. I did watch some of that. That's the only one I've ever started and turned off. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> wait, wait. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. The Sound of Music Live 2013 with Carrie Underwood. I have feelings about her and nobody wants to hear them. They're mm-hmm. not great. Next, The Little Mermaid Live. Oh, I watched that. I forgot I watched that. That was a thing. A Christmas Story Live. I love my Rudolph, but I never watched this one because mm-hmm. there are some things that I very strongly feel like you don't redo. And mm-hmm. A Christmas Story is one of them. Between yeah, it being I have a movies. Classic, yeah. Yeah. I was like, don't yeah. redo it. Just please don't. Don't, <laughs> don't do movies, it. Movies, songs. Yeah. We stop covering Hallelujah. Um, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, Christmas Story, it, it kind of is that parallel. It, it meets in the middle of the original is very good and no one should redo it. And yeah. I am so fucking sick of this piece of pop culture history. Are there other Christmas things I can enjoy? And then every year I watch it, and I'm like, can I we- like that. Yeah. I mean, uh, to be honest, though, can we have some newer forms of celebration of Christmas or like other, you know, winter holidays? Because, you know, as soon as that, you know, midnight bell hits for like November 1st, you know, Mariah Carey gets thawed out and we get to hear her <laughs> for two months. <laughs> <laughs> comes out from her mortal slumber <laughs> is that like the last big hit christmas song i know it's like sufjan stevens did a christmas album that did well other people have done christmas albums that did well but is that like the last great christmas song in pop culture well that's the one we hear all the time every year so i think that's kind of like a on loop <laughs> a forced like you know I don't know. Speaking I haven't. I haven't. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Christmas, the next one on this list is Dr. Seuss's The Grinch Musical Live. I like The Grinch. I know. Yeah. I did not know this was a thing. It the the costume looks like the live action Grinch, and that makes me not want to watch it. Mm, yeah, oh. the live action with Jim Carrey. Yeah, that wasn't the best look. Here's a great one: Hairspray mm. Live. Hairspray. Okay great movie the original movie is great the redone musical is great and yeah, i did good. enjoy watching it on um on on uh nbc uh let's see they had uh kristen chinowitz who's a uh, lovely lovely always love her stuff um it says joe's offline it does yeah it, it does. said it reconnected Okay. <clears throat> we'll find out. So. <laughs> oh, so. um, it said it said it a, for a, a second it did, and then it said it reconnected. Hopefully it did. It's saving locally, so I'm not too worried. 
Okay. I'm also not going to edit this out if it all worked. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Jennifer Hudson, Ariana Grande, and Darren Chris. Okay. Next, Rent Live. Hate Rent. Yeah, I don't I like never Rent. Was a Sorry. Rent. Yeah, I went to high school. With people who were so obsessed with Rent. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and they were like, I don't know. I I just don't like it very much. Like, I think that when when my friends were obsessed with it, the movie hadn't hmm. come out, so they just listened to the soundtrack. Yeah, and um, then the movie came out. Oh, no. And I did see that, and it was so bad. I don't oh like it. no! <laughs> you gotta stop! You gotta stop remaking musicals yeah. with the original actors because, especially if they like, they they were supposed to be like twenty. In yeah, the and they're role, like 50, now they're thirty five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, please! They, like I, they they keep doing it. Uh. What was that? Well, they're, Evan? Just, they're just trying to tap into that generation, original generation. I, in a sense, I understand it, but at the same time, I'm like, no, please don't. <laughs> yeah. The fourth best is the Wiz Live. Hard agree. No notes on the Wiz, um, because it the Wiz was the third one they did after Peter Pan and the Sound of Music, which were just awful. So mm-hmm. then they picked something a little bit less obvious, less traditional, yeah. The Wiz. And it was so, so, so great. Man. Then there was Annie, which I didn't watch, but I kind of wanted to. Uh, Have they Grease done like a live, live action? Uh, Have they uh, done like a live action version of Wicked yet? Like for any no, prime time? Uh, Wicked might be too new. Too new. But... Um, yeah, because the next one is Grease Live, which oh, okay, I watched with my husband who had never seen Grease, but I watched it a <laughs> lot when I was way too young to see it. And I'm just sitting mm-hmm. there like rattling off the lines as they're happening. And he's like, how are you doing this? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's because, it, because it follows it's the original script. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, if you don't take, you gotta do, I like the ones that aren't so serious. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like that's essential. And the best one was uh, the Jesus Christ Superstar, which I watched with exceeding disinterest, but watched a lot. <laughs> oh, John Legend's really good uh, in that. I, th- I think so the I original know. one, yeah, I watched. Go ahead. The Jesus Christ Superstar. No, I think of the Jesus Christ Superstar. I think the original one I watched. Um, the Grease, obviously, the original movie I watched. Like when I was in mm. chorus, you know, uh, we basically we're made to sing it so that's the reason why i know the music so, <laughs> so you know it's all like the even... words are we go together like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> tell me more tell me more like us yeah it's ingrained in my head and i cannot dump that information oh can i have god. some more useless information please <laughs> please i'm so tired <laughs> i am a sponge for Greece. useless info <laughs> Oh god, especially when you have to sing it a lot. No, we did um that last song from the movie, which like escapes me in choir in middle school. So yep. we had to like actually like you actually have same, to yeah. sing the scatting <laughs> in the right yep. yes, you like, order. <laughs> Otherwise it's gonna sound like a wreck. Which it did sound like a mess, but middle schoolers. It's a the scat man. <laughs> oh, scat man. Oh man, that's what I again we're we're just getting farther away from the topic, but we that's are we, we, that's that's gotta be like one of the weirdest hits of the nineties, and the list of weird hits in the nineties is very long. <laughs> it is, it is. And uh going back to on topic, <laughs> uh I would say a lot of her influences her uh to H-E-R. say Gabriella, yes, right? H E R, yeah, Gabby. Uh Gabby Wilson. Uh for the most part, a lot of her influences are 90s R&B. When you hear her music, you'll hear some influences from like Lauryn Hill, which of course, mm-hmm. uh, the song, I think it was, it says, I think it's uh, Lost Souls. That was the one I hear most, the influence of Lauryn Hill in it. I would say her style, the representation of herself, very much like Aaliyah, again, from the 90s. Yeah. I love Aaliyah. Um, try this thing, because again, it's kind of like, um, what do you call it? She calls it tomboy chic. So I'm guessing, yeah, I could see 
the way she yeah. would coin it as that's what she was going for. Um, but yeah, like a lot of what I loved about R&B in the 90s and what I listened to, I see a lot of it echoed in her music. And it's really nice to get a return to that because that's yeah. really what I missed. And like once we hit the 2000s, there seemed to be a kind of distancing from that style of music. And it was kind of sad. And that's when I started to not listen as much anymore because it had changed so much in a way that I felt lost kind of the original connection to soul in many ways. Like what were some of the examples of what you did like in the nineties? Um, I liked, I liked Tony Braxton. Mm. Um, I definitely, yeah, Leah is what I liked. Um, there's Brandy, there's, uh, I'm trying to think who else. Also some male, obviously like R and B and stuff like that. I would listen to, but yeah, that's, some of the artists that I can off the top of my head remember that I listened to at the time. Or Fuji, stuff like that. Oh, Lauren Fuji's. Hill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love a lot Fuji's. of the stuff I listen to is probably a little bit more pop adjacent. Mm -hmm. I love Destiny's Child. And like Yeah, I remember Destiny's DLC. Child. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so those were kind of pop adjacent and especially mm -hmm. TLC mixed a lot of other styles. Oh yes, I TLC. They, that was the other one. I love TLC. Yeah. yeah. I love like, TLC. <laughs> Like man, no scrubs, waterfall, unpretty. No. Like those are Hanging great out the songs. Passenger side, I was a best friend's best ride, friend's ride. trying to holler at, at me. By the way, have you ever done that song that at karaoke? Can live rent free. <laughs> have you ever done that song at karaoke? Um, have I? Because you might forget. have. I you might forget. have. <laughs> you forget that the outro goes on and on. Like they repeat yep. the chorus like the, over and times. over. That's why you never forget it. <laughs> Yeah, but the end is so long. I remember doing it at my friend's bachelorette party. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like exhausted going, okay, when does it end? <laughs> it was like in Nashville on Lower Broad before like the bachelorette parties just completely took over. So it was still like a, a, not a rarity, but not like you wouldn't pass by 15 other bachelorette parties. Like she was the only bachelorette party we saw that night oh on a God. Saturday in Nashville <laughs> in the summer. So <laughs> different wow. times. But we went, I forget where we went, but we went to some off, just off Broadway place and we mm -hmm. were, we did no scrubs. And all of a sudden there's this woman in front. She's like, like wearing work clothes. Like she just come from some work event. Yeah. Like, like, she, like she's working at a restaurant and she's just like singing along. <laughs> Jumping then, in. And, yeah. Because she, she heard it while she was walking by. I was like, this is my, this is my, song. my jam. <laughs> went in, fucking did it with us. And then just bolted i was like you I know what that. that's special <laughs> party crash hey you know i'm just hop in do yeah. my song okay see you later <laughs> by the end we we're like like five times through the course like Who this was is that? enough yeah. we're like we're like this is enough i feel like i think we ultimately <laughs> just kind of walked off the stage it might have been the last song of the night my friend was like doing a uh mechanical bull <laughs> oh my god i remember when it. those were a thing wow <laughs> a very coyote ugly wow Oh, why is my camo broken? Fix it. Uh, we we apologize for any visual technical difficulties or audio difficulties. This was what happens with streaming services at times, but we appreciate your patience. <laughs> camo, I pay for this shit. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, that's fine. I but should yeah. get a Brio. <laughs> yeah, I, I recommend it. I like the Brio. Yeah. That's once once I got it working brio. right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Logitech Brio, really great um, for at least on my end for what I do. Because uh, I can't have a normal list. DSLR. Yeah, they're pretty good price too. I'm sure some people have them on sale also. You know uh, why I can get a Brio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, but what do you call it? The thing I wanted to steer back to was uh, gear for uh, her. Uh, mm -hmm. She definitely, amp-wise, is a big fan of the Fender Twins reverb, which, of course, playing blues or soul or R&B definitely lends itself to that flavor. It's um, a safe choice, yes, but it's a safe yeah. choice because it's just a great, great that amp. Too. Why yeah, between, between the two amps, when I went to go pick my first uh, amp, um, I was torn between, was it a Fender's Blue Junior and a Vox? Uh, and of course I ended up coming home with the Vox, but yes, <laughs> I played. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But yeah, um, I could see how that would lend itself to her style of playing and as a great amp as well. Um, she mostly, when it comes to effects pedals, she loves boss pedals. And, oh, you know, she always who finds she got that affinity from. Yeah, exactly. Probably from Prince. Uh, but mm -hmm. she always finds herself gravitating back to boss pedals and, more importantly, the delays. So that's mm. normally what she does. She noted that she's been exploring effects pedals a lot more recently. Um, and But she kind of keep, tries to keep it simple because learning pedals, as we both know, is a very time-consuming endeavor because you need to know your pedals and you have to invest a good amount of time and creativity in exploring how they can help you find new ways of you know, expressing yourself musically. So yeah. I, I found that was kind of nice to kind of have a mirror reflected and hearing her say some of the things that, of course, both you and I know of like, you need time to get to know pedals. It's not like, okay, I got it. Let's go. And like, no, let me open the manual. At least on some of these, I have to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's and why you can't, that's why you can't turn around a demo every single day. No. It's <laughs> Unless it's your full-time job, you are not giving yourself any amount of time to learn the pedal. And that's no. feedback I've, I get sometimes. Is people are like, you didn't learn the pedal. I'm like, oh, I did. Sorry you didn't think so. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for watching. Yeah, sometimes it's just leaving a comment to oh. be an asshole. Yeah, something that yeah. doesn't even... We, we um, covered that last week. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, that's old ground. Um, old ground. But yeah, I mean... Again, when it comes to effects pedals, yeah, you kind of have to get some time to understand the best ways or practical ways in which you yourself can play them in order to show it to other people. Because, again, my way of playing is different than your kind of playing. And, yeah. you know, it's like a box of chocolates, you know. <laughs> you start playing the effects pedal, you don't know what you're going to get depending on what your music style is or what may come out. Yeah. Very true. And yeah she sends out some pretty unique stuff i mean it was just a few years ago that guitar brands some guitar brands were <laughs> lamenting about the death of guitar in popular yes. music and i think that what guitar brands and adjacent people need to to do people actually work in that is they need to actually do a better job of finding rising talent you gotta look like, actively like her like yvette young you know, like um, Tyler Childers or Billy Strings. Like, you need to find the people who are younger, like younger than 50. No offense yeah. to people who are older than 50. Yeah, not I'm just not, posting. I mean, this, is, this isn't an ageism thing. It's just it's just a fact about, like, if you want younger people to play the guitar, you need to prop you need up to the give them. Yeah. You have to show like, them representation. You have to see a mirror. They have to be able to see themselves mirror. in this person. They need to see a mirror. And that's really important for, again, wanting to inspire a next generation. And I understand the importance of showing people from 50 years ago, you know, who made history and who did what. But I think it's also really important that we actively look for people today that are doing and breaking ground and being innovated in their craft with music. Yeah, because it's like Slash is cool, you know? Yeah. I think everybody outside of whoever keeps making Slash guitars is kind of like, it's maybe enough Slash guitars. But then yeah. again, they make them because they sell. Like, I know mm -hmm. we, we, we like to rag on things a lot as like. <laughs> I, I don't want to say uppity, but a lot of us in, in, in a, who are deep in a hobby can get pretty uppity mm. about stuff when, you know, if you just want to buy Slash's guitars because you like Guns N' Roses and you're just want to learn Guns yeah, N' Roses that's songs, that's valid. But if you're part of an industry and you want to actually and actively attract younger players, you need to prop up those younger players, which is why it was so exciting when Fender started releasing like the her signature strat mm -hmm. which i do have yes this is the maybe like i was actually really surprised when fender actually sent me this and uh so thank you to fender but it has again that matching headstock i love matching headstocks yeah i have a holographic rocket music strap on it Sometimes oh, yeah. I play the light up one. Mm -hmm. It's 
like on stage, like in in my in my studio, the the goal is to have the blandest lighting. Um, <laughs> but when it's on a stage with like actual stage lighting, mm. this thing becomes Pops. so so beautiful it really pops yeah photos really don't capture it i mean like it's depending on how the light hits it is really how you can get that kind of holographic effect like yeah when i first saw it it was just like oh that's so cool I, I love that it's easy to make the mistake of thinking it's just a silver guitar when yeah. you see pictures of it um i think they did a pretty good job in the first promo video mm -hmm. of getting some colors in it but every once in a while like the light will hit this just right. And I'll be like, I got to take a picture of that. <laughs> but you know, no, I totally get that. It has some pretty interesting pickups as a Fender noiseless. Having no noise is pretty essential in R and B. There's not a lot to cover up a 60 cycle hum kind of thing. Um, like there is in rock music. People kind of, they expect that sound in R and B. You expect Clean. a cleaner, yeah. clearer, uh, like, Tone. presence yeah yeah mm -hmm. presence so that's why this has those though i'm probably going to swap those i got these i got the psychedelic strat set from seymour duncan so i'm going to try these in it interesting yeah i look forward um, to hearing what that's going to sound like like a, yeah. you're going to do a before and after kind of comparison uh, yeah, maybe chop I, up I, an I old video do. and yeah no i'll, I'll just so do what side. I usually do for pickup is i some reason i don't do a lot of unpaid pickup demos um I film it mm -hmm. with the original pickups. I immediately go swap the pickups. I and try then, to yeah. keep the strings if I can. But she's have vintage style tuners, so I probably can. Mm -hmm. um, and then I go back. It's exact same setup. New wiring. I mean, new same wiring, new pickups. New pickups. Yeah. So nice. that's that's generally what I do. And that's probably what I'm going to do today. It It means it's a full day situation yes um <laughs> many hours of filming recording then yeah. popping out the pickups and then yeah. yeah so i'm my my goal is to have that one drop on december 15th okay for those who are waiting i don't usually do oh, my that's gonna be the calendar. perfect day for that special what? to come out yeah well the 15th is when that abc special comes out with beating oh the beast my God. so you just timed oh. it perfectly <laughs> See, you guys, that's why you definitely have to have a drop that day now. Oh my God, the pressure's on. So let's see, I will You be, can do it. I can do it on the 10th or the 11th. I'll film it that weekend. Oh, yeah. Thanks for suggesting that day, Monique. You had no idea. That's Monique nope. at Seymour Duncan. Big props to Monique. We love Monique. Monique Thank gave you. me a really props. cool necklace at NAMM. Hmm. Made by MJ. It's a, it's a, it's a pickup. Oh, I see. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I'm trying to write something. No, it oh, that's right lovely. There. Yeah, that's cool. I need to switch out the chain because I'm allergic to the, I'm allergic to everything, but I'm allergic to <laughs> Yeah, nickel. like certain nickel plated thing, I'm nickel. allergic to it too. So it has to be yes. silver. I have the same thing. Yeah. And I hate that because it's like some of the things like, oh, I really love that, but I hesitate to buy it. And I was just like, I don't want to rash on my neck. When That'll I suck. was a teenager, <laughs> I just wanted to buy jewelry from the mall. Yeah, me too. And I couldn't. I never could. And it made me so upset. <laughs> I was upset. like, oh. No, same. Same. <laughs> really upsetting. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Now more. Yes. It's going to be good. It's going to be fun. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think I tried to get her on the podcast before she was super duper famous, mm -hmm. which is probably still pretty famous by the time yeah, I was trying no, to. Get I, I think she got she got a head start. Like, yeah. I, I know, yeah, you would have had to start when she was like six or like five. <laughs> she was like a Disney Channel person too. Hey, she it goes pretty pretty far back uh, with yeah. her starting out. I mean, even like the first uh, volume one that she released. Um, she didn't. She pretty much concealed her identity. Didn't put any personal information. Just wanted her music to be at the forefront. Um, not very to look mysterious, at. very prince. Yeah, and I also kind of appreciate it because, of course, I also love Ghost, the band as well, and that also was very much a part of their until recently. Uh, behind masks, you know, there's like a lore and a thing behind it, you know, mysterious kind of thing. So I like that kind of 
putting forth a uh, storyboard or like a something behind beyond just the music and the band. There's some kind of thing more to it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Man, so now I'm just looking at the uh, this guitar. I feel like there's not enough mystery. I don't. Yeah, rock. there really isn't. It's like everything yeah. is just on display. What you see is what you get. There's like nothing Social beyond. Media. It's very superficial. Like there's nothing beyond. Um, yeah, I really miss some of the older music where you had a story beyond just or they had those albums that were focused on telling a story. Yeah. From like, uh, I think that's one of the Alice Cooper albums that I loved, which was The Last Temptation. It also was paired with the Neil Gaiman uh, comic as well with the album sale because he also wrote on it as well. Um, cool. I love that it's kind of a storytelling album. So that that's one of my favorite. Yeah. I've listened to other Alice Cooper albums afterwards, but I really, really, really love storyboard kind of uh, storytelling records. music. Yeah concepts now, some of my favorite records are like it's nerdy it's so fucking nerdy but i i like i like a lot of records like that i'm a big hold mm -hmm. steady fan obviously i love stories yep. and songs um one of my favorites though is delivery man by elvis costello that's a a, a concept record loosely speaking yeah. but uh yeah. he kind of thought better of it halfway through and was like uh i'm just gonna pick the best songs from the story put them on a record and <laughs> And yeah, call it a day. Let people like kind of follow the story as they want to, but he didn't force it. No, now, I always want I to know it what be. it would have sounded yeah. like if he had, if he had put them on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Another another artist that I really love, uh, Ben Howard, also does that stuff too. I love his work. Oh yeah, so, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So do we got more what's new stuff to talk about, or more her stuff to talk about. Um, I think for the most part, I kind of covered a lot of what I was going to cover for her. Um, as far as stuff for me, um, I am for the most part, of course, I am hoping by the time this airs, like I will have the demo released. Oh, <laughs> I am the hoping Aldi. so. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I'm hoping. Um, I got the solo portion recorded. Um, I was also listening to the original and seeing there's also a portion right as the second verse comes in. Um, there's a little bit of a guitar playing in the background of the lead. So before we were doing this podcast, I was saying, okay, what is that listening and trying to see if yeah. I can get it. So I'm trying to add some elements of the original in there, but sometimes I'll add a little bit and then break away from it. Just something yeah. to be like nod here and there so yeah doing that kind of stuff learning a song takes time so unlike my other thing beforehand that i would do either i'd write a song or i would just go okay well here's a verse and a chorus of me kind of messing around with the pedal which i did originally i've actually wanted to take more time and like you know what let me kind of focus and use this pedal in such a way where i am actually placing it with a song that would have been based in the time period of which the influences are with effects mm -hmm. into that pedal. So I'm looking forward to finishing that because even I'm getting, yeah, you know, impatient. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So life, life balance, yeah. work balance. Um, but for the most part, I think that is um, for the most part what I have going on for now um, as far as anything with, life and family you know obviously i'll be seeing my mom you know for thanksgiving and whatnot um i'll maybe see like a few people for the day of thanksgiving which will be nice i haven't peopled in quite a bit so it'll be nice to people <laughs> i'm gonna be i'm gonna be people in the rest of the week wednesday whole study thursday whole study oh friday whole study saturday whole yeah, study, I, every, and emily every hopkins time. Yes, yes, you yeah. did mention that last time. It's like every, I, I think every time we talk, or almost every time we talk, it's like hold steady, hold steady, hold, hold steady, steady. <laughs> hold for, that's for, steady. That's for all you sniveling indie kids, <laughs> clusterfuck clever kids. Yeah, hmm. um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not proud, I'm not embarrassed <laughs> either. No, I am what I am. I want. I just like massive nights is a big thing. Hmm. It's it's friends that I've made over the past. But they've been a band for twenty years. I've been listening to them since I was seventeen. So like, 
over half, almost half my life. Yeah, at this Get, point. you're getting to I've that point, half the life. Yeah, I've been meeting people at these shows, and uh, Massive Nights is the destination. Last time I went, hmm. at one point I turned around before the show started, and I saw a guy I went to college with. Oh my god! In Nashville, to clarify. But Small I was his, gr- his girlfriend was a big Hold Steady fan. He and I went to a show together because his girlfriend was a fan. Yeah. And, and he's like, I got to see what this shit's about. And it was like the first time I went to a show, a Hold Steady show with someone who wasn't a big Hold Steady fan. I was like, mm-hmm. it's different than a normal rock show. The fans, yeah. you'll see, we're harmless. <laughs> but uh, he was like, yeah, you're kind of a different person at a Hold Steady show. It's like a quiet college kid. <laughs> Not boisterous. I'm just like fucking raging. <laughs> you're like, wait, do they get a load of me? <laughs> <laughs> like, just to warn you, this is not the Emily you're used to. No. Nope. Shout out to Ben and Sarah. Hope to see ya. I should text them. <laughs> Be seeing you soon. <laughs> I'm gonna text Ben. See you next week. <laughs> Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> We're speaking about it, and then you're talking to like, oh yeah, a panel coming out. Now you're like already projecting. Well, I don't want to be. Yeah, Ben, are you coming? <laughs> hey, Ben. Yeah, Sarah, so dragging you to New York. <laughs> I'm excited. I'll be going with Rick, and um, he and I haven't been in New York together since 2012. Oh, that'll be lovely. Yeah, yeah. And we went on the um, oh gosh, what's New York's version of Stonehenge? That's that sounds like such a stupid thing to say. Um, a so- on certain days in New York, the sun sets perfectly between the buildings. It happens twice a year, and okay. we were there one of uh, one of the days the sun was setting perfectly between the buildings. Oh, that's cool. It's really cool. Manhattan Hinge. That's there we go. what it's called. <laughs> yeah. So I, again, I'm going to eat so much halal cart food. <laughs> All the things. You know, we were talking before we started about like Ethiopian, because I had Ethiopian food for dinner, hmm. lunch, dinner, whatever. I had a meal. Liner. <laughs> was it liner? It was liner, <laughs> dunch. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I had Ethiopian food and I was actually talking about it on a work call, which is why I ordered it. And I thought, man, if I ever leave Seattle, I'm going to really miss that we have so many great Ethiopian restaurants. Mm. Yeah, I I hope to experience some Ethiopian someday. Yeah, because we mostly have more Caribbean. Well, I mean, I definitely do want it. I was actually before the, um, what do you call it? The panini (laughs) or the the pandemic uh, that occurred. Yes. I was actually planning that year to actually come out and see Seattle. So because the first time I went, I saw my friend and we climbed up Mount Hood and everything. Wow. She she basically left Fort Lauderdale and went to Portland. So it was my visiting her and also seeing that side of the West. Um, so I was already planning in 2020 to come back, see her again. And then the other half of it, I wanted to see Seattle this time. And then, well, we know what happened. So I have yet to travel anywhere. And now I live in the fishbowl hall 24 <laughs> seven. So, uh, I was kind of in a similar spot where yeah. I'm about to go see my parents in South Carolina for the first time. And uh, as I've had to keep reminding my mom during the pandemic, when she says, you guys never come to see us. I'm like, well, I did have concrete plans. <laughs> and <laughs> have plans to do things. They just concrete didn't happen. Plans. <laughs> then if you don't remember, if you don't forget, <laughs> there was a global pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it happened, you know. Everybody made plans. And that's, uh, yeah, the, the song sometimes that uh, her recorded she said yeah that was one of the songs she wrote in the pandemic and she said it's basically an exercise and everybody made plans tour was were supposed to happen you know everyone was going to be going out to play music and suddenly everything stopped and she had to basically sit down with herself and have that self-reflection of you know what i need to not control everything Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Sometimes you work for something hard and it just isn't meant to be and doesn't happen. And just that's life. Everybody's everything. 
mm-hmm. got halted. Oh yeah. At least we all had that in common, but it yes. didn't make it hurt very much less. Like mm-hmm. my band getting some traction. Oh yeah. Pandemic. No, I had. Yep, I had Release an acoustic record. band. Yep, I was performing with a band too, and then the pandemic happened, and that. Bye bye. <laughs> so my friend Ben, I was messaging. He lives in Durham. I'm like, see you next week. He said, "Are you in town?" It's like, no, <laughs> no. I'm gonna have some massive nights though. And he's like, "Oh gosh, it's almost December. You forgot." <laughs> oh no! Get no. them tickets if you can. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I can't say what he just told me. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Keep it on the deal. <laughs> congratulations ben and sarah i'm sorry we'll see you at massive nights but i'm sure mm-hmm. you're gonna have a great time doing what you're doing instead of course of course but yeah it's a pretty good place to end it mm-hmm. but um you're in new york this week me too <laughs> come ice skating with me in prospect park it's like Central nice. Park, but with more hills and fewer people at the skating rink. Oh, well, that, that's good to know, because I'd like to, next time I go traveling, I'd definitely like to hit up a skating rink, because I played ice hockey growing up. So, oh. you know, that's, that's for me, going ice skating again would be nice. I'm going to go to Tom's Restaurant near Prospect Park in the Brooklyn Art Museum. And I'm going to drink at Lake Street every single night. So come <laughs> to Lake Street. Lake Street, buy me right. gin and tonic. By I the definitely... way, I got this rosemary gin. Mm-hmm. Good. And Nicola Lozniak brought it to me when she was Ooh. in town. I didn't tell her at the time, but when I was up and I saw Meredith Coloma <laughs> up in Vancouver also, uh, Meredith took me to a liquor store and I bought some of the same rosemary gin. Oh, Nicole, no. <laughs> Nicole had bought it for me in 2019. Yeah. And I drank some of it on the train <laughs> on the way back. From Vancouver Guitar Show with my teeny tuna nestled Aww. under my arm. Into the crook, moment. into your arm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to drink the alcohol you don't buy on the train on the train, but mm-hmm. it's a lot easier to sneak it than an airplane. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Take trains, they're great. Uh, but yeah. to everybody out there, we have merch you get also podcast.com slash shop we have a patreon patreon.com slash get offset at five dollar level or a month five dollar a month level or above you get access to our exclusive discord server there's still time to join and participate in our famous 25 dollar whatever secret santa yes that was my favorite we already have um, a lot of people signed up, and I just got yes. the invites yesterday. Yes, I need to compile a list. I will admit, I am a little late on quite a few things. Yeah, I need yeah. to do that. What else we got? Um, please like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts if that's where please. you're consuming this. It is the best. I love those. They help so much. So m- you guys have no idea. No, it was really great reading them last time. The few people that did leave the reviews on the Apple Music. Thank you so much for taking the time to to do that. Seriously, that's a huge deal. And Um, also, uh, thank you again, people that have sent us during the live chats when these premiere on the Tuesdays. uh, The super chats. Yeah, I love the live chat. Actively. Yeah. This direction. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm making some. Assu- I could make some assumptions about who's going to be there, and then I'll feel bad if they're not there. Mm-hmm. But usually, it's like yeah. Gretch, I love Zeppelin, the, I love the Jason, that are there. Sassy, Robert. Mm-hmm. I'm forgetting so many people. Jacob has been there. Jacob, Sovereign has been there. Sovereign. Um, Gretch Zeppelin. Like I'm Who trying to remember. Ninja. Like everyone. If I don't remember, Michael uh, is there. Uh, yeah, there's there's yeah. quite a few people that do come to our lives, and we do love hanging out. Finally blocked the guy who kept calling me his wife. Oh, God. Hated that. <laughs> hated that. Yep. Hated, hated it. it. <laughs> hated every minute of it. Hope you know that. And also I muted the guy. <laughs> There's a guy who were like three or four premieres in a row after I did my Phoebe Bridgers video. This is like months after that video launched. Which is <laughs> like just randomly comment first. <laughs> no, no. He was like bitching about Phoebe Bridgers. I'm like, I don't care. I don't give a shit, uh, but you're being really annoying. So um, if if the Phoebe Bridgers guy outliers. is still yeah. out there and 
commenting, I've muted you. Nobody's seeing it. Guy who calls me your wife. Nobody's seeing your comments anymore, and we're all much happier for it. Not to be mean. <laughs> no, of course not. That was wrong. <laughs> That's a really wrong thing to do. Well, um, uh, in the meantime, though, until obviously we see you all next time, and we appreciate you guys in the live chat when we get to chat. I do look forward to those. Um, yeah. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. I hope, obviously, if you're in colder climates, you stay warm, you know, um, enjoy your family, pet your dog, your cat, your reptiles, parakeets, everything. I hope it is bright. I hope it is lovely. And until next time. <laughs> thanks for watching slash listening. And thanks for understanding. My name is Emily. I'm Joan of Heart. Goodbye. Bye-bye.